contrary to God's will. And I want to say this. I want you to understand this. If that is so, then there will be an opportunity for you to repent. Repent and leave that at this altar and get up from there forgiven and prepared to partake of the Lord's Supper. Because he said to do it otherwise, to do it just neglecting the sin or overlooking the sin in your life and say, well, I'm just going to partake of it anyway. It's not that big of a deal. Well, it's that big of a deal to God. Amen. This is a very sacred service in the eyes of God. Amen. And we should treat it as such. And to treat it a, a, uh, in any other way uh, is, is really on the borderline of blasphemy. God. And no Christian would ever want to be guilty of blaspheming God. Amen. To blaspheme God. So, I just want to point out and take just a minute to point this out. I want to just go real quickly through this. It says, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat the bread uh, and drink of this cup unworthily, unworthily, that would be with sin in our life, with known sin in our life, with, with when we got off with our brother, when we got a known sin in our life for you to partake of this supper and not have got that right and not not repent. And, and I'm not simply talking about remind God of it. You don't have to remind God of it. He knows the sin that's in your life and in my life. You have to remind Him. But you come and repent of it for your sake. First off, that you might mention it to God so then, 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 then he knows that you're willing to admit that, Lord, I've got wrong. I've got sin in my life. I am, I am admitting it to you. But not only am I admitting it to you, I am going to change it. I am going to make a difference. I, I, I'm, I am going, I'm not only going to recognize and admit, but I'm going to make a turn. I'm going to turn around the other way. If, 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 I'm, if, if my life is going this way in a direction away from the will of God, if I'm doing things in my life that I know is not pleasing to God, that, that's hurting the cause of Christ, that damages His church, or anything in my life that is contrary to God, I have to be willing today. And see, this is a service that you don't get to put this all and say, well, I'll just, I'll get to it later, or, or God's really not that, you know, that much interested in that stuff nowadays. It's just kind of the, you know, the, the days of that we don't really have to work. You're wrong. Amen. This is a most sacred service Amen. that we as Christians partake of. There is no greater service that we partake of to bring back to remembrance what Christ has done for us. To remember the sacrifice, the blood that was shed, the body that was broken for us. This is us admitting that we know that our God died on Calvary's cross and shed his blood for us. And we are just reminding ourselves when we partake of the Lord's Supper what a great and awesome gift God gave us to be able to believe in him, believe in what he done on the cross, and trust Him to forgive our sins and to save us eternally. Amen. This, this thing right here, this is about our eternity. This is about our forever. This is not about, you know, one day of the week or cover this week. Or <clears throat> this, is, this is all eternity on the line here. Amen. And, and you, you, you acknowledging that, that you know that, and, and this is an important thing to God. <clears throat> <clears throat> but he said, let a man examine himself. And so let him eat that bread and drink that cup. Or, if, or for he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh, this very strong word, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. Damnation. That's a, boy, that's a strong word. I would not want to be guilty 
of knowingly drinking damnation unto myself. Amen. Oh, drink of damnation to himself, not discerning, not understanding the Lord's body, not understanding Calvary, not remembering it for how horrid and, and, and terrible that it was for God to come and die in our stead. Because, not because he was guilty of anything, but because we are guilty right. of sin in our life. We are guilty. Amen. But it cost him his life on Calvary. And he rose to live again. And he said, for this cause, many are, listen to me, many are sick and weak. And many, many is more than just a few. He said many sleep. He said there's some people that have cut their life short because they partook of the Lord's Supper unworthily. They were not willing to repent. They were not willing to admit to God that they had known sin in their life. And they just partook of it lackadaciously like Oh, it doesn't really matter. God's not really keeping up with it that much. This is a serious thing to God. To drink damnation unto yourself. To cause yourself to be weak and sickly and possibly bring death when you partake of it unworthily. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. This is the greatest, one of the greatest parts of this of this, this set of scriptures here to remind us about this thing here. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves we should not be judged. This is verse 32. But when we are judged we are chastened of the Lord. We are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Listen to what he said. Because we are children of God, if we will come to God and repent, confess and turn away from the known sin that we have in our life, the known things that we know that are going wrong or we're doing wrong in our life that's causing pain, causing hindrances, causing damage to the work of God, to the cause of Christ, he said, if you'll judge yourself, I won't have to judge you. But if I have to judge you, remember this, you are a child of mine, and I will chasten you. That is saying, I will take you to the woodshed, and I will rip your hide. I will make you wish you had repented, and had owned up to it, and had forsaken it, and turned away from it. He said, because you're mine. You're my child. I'll tear you up. I will tear you up. And this kind of does away with that lie uh, that, that, that many people try to tell that we as Baptists believe that you can get saved and live just any way you want to and raise hell and just live like a, a hellion all your life and, and claim to know God and drink and carry on and and partake of the sins of this world and mistreat your brothers and sisters in Christ and, and, and not, not protect uh, the cause of Christ and do anything and sacrifice for the cause of Christ. This, this means that we will be chastened as a child of God. And listen to me. He said in, in Hebrews chapter 12 it, that he said if you're not chastened Listen to me. If you partake of this Lord's Supper today and you will not confess, forsake, repent, turn away, make light the things that are wrong in your life, he said, I will tear you up. But listen to me. If he doesn't, if you just drink you a little grape juice and eat you a cracker and blow it off, and he doesn't change in you, you're not his. Amen. <coughs> he doesn't whip the devil's kids. Amen. He doesn't whip the devil's kids. I just said,
said something very important. And I hope you've got it. It's very important that you deal with what's wrong in your life today. He said, if you judge yourself, you would not be good. But if you want, he said, I'll chasten you myself. I'll chasten you myself. Wherefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, tarry one for another. Tarry one for another. When he says for us to tarry one for another, that is to first admit and take care of the sin that's in your life between you and God. All you have to do is go to Him with a broken heart, with a broken and contrite spirit, and He will forgive you. He doesn't give you a task that you cannot accomplish. He said the door is wide open uh, to the altar, and you can come to me and I'll forgive you if you will admit it and repent of it. If you'll turn away, if you'll do what it takes to make it right. He said, I'll forgive it. Just like that. Promise to us that he'll forgive it just like that. But if you stand there or sit there with that stiff neck and that prideful look and that arrogance about, well, I ain't doing nothing wrong. It's them. It's her. It's him. It ain't me. And you sit there with that stiff neck like that and bow up at God, he'll call you on it. He'll, he's not scared to call you on it. He'll call you on it. He'll take away things that's precious to you. Listen to me. I may not know what buttons it takes to push to bring you to your knees, but I promise you God knows what it takes to bring you to your knees. Just like that. Boom. He can bring you to your knees just like that. And bow your back. And make you cry out for mercy. And he said, if you make me do that, I can do that. He said, if you, any man hunger in this last part here, what they were doing in the church of Corinth, they was, one of the parts that he talked about, they had got out of hand with them. And the rich people were bringing big lavish lunches. Uh, and, and they wouldn't let the poor have anything. And the poor didn't have anything to bring. Uh, not only didn't have anything to bring, they had to stand there in shame that they didn't have anything, and then the rich that had more than they could even tote uh, wouldn't even give to the poor. But then, so that's what verse 34 is breaking down and talking about. And he says, don't do that. If you're going to do that, he's like that. He's like that at home. You know, that'd be like when we had the supper last Sunday night, and, and I brought, you know, me and Teresa, a big old plate of steak and potatoes and, uh, you know, lobsters and, all that, and had that all piled up around. And I went to the table, and me and her sat there with her elbows kind of pushing everybody out of the way so we could get to our high dollar food and not have anybody else partake of it at all. So that's what it would be like. So he says, don't do that. So I'm going to close this part of the service so we don't uh, stay here all day. But I said, we plenty enough to get God's point across. All I have to say at one time, God will have to beat himself over and over and over again. If God says anything one time, that's enough. God does not have to repeat himself over and over and over again. And he doesn't have to repeat himself over and over again for you to understand where you're at with God. You know where you're at with God. You know if you're causing uh, disruption in his, the body of Christ. You know if you've got known sin in your life. You know if what you're doing is contrary to God. I'm not talking about you getting your way. I'm talking about God getting His way. Amen. His way, not your way. Not my way. But God gets His way. So as I close this part of the service, I'm now about to open up the altar. To open up the altar. We'll wait, we'll wait on the music. We'll have to have the music right now, Ms. Bob. We'll, we'll wait on the music. We'll do that maybe at the end if we, we determine to do that. But right now what I'm going to do, I'm going to ask you to stand. I'm going to ask you to stand. And if you want to come to the altar at this time and get this thing right, then this is your opportunity to do so. Do you have to come to the altar? No, you don't have to come to the altar. 
It's just, you know, a, a statement you're making to God. And whatever statement you want to make, that's between you and the Lord. But you can stay right where you're at and pray and ask God to forgive you. And he'll do that. But it's time for us, all of us, to get right with God. We're going into a brand new year praying that God will do a mighty work in this church this year. And, and, and I'm telling you, if he has to move somebody out of the way to do it, he'll move somebody out of the way. If we stay stiff-necked and, and rebellious toward God, he'll not stand for it. He wants people saved in his church. He wants his children loving each other. And he says for us to tarry for each other, wait on each other, love each other like brothers and sisters in Christ. So this time is for you, between you and your God.